All right, YouTube, what's going on? Dananu here, the man with black privilege. And uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, Thor Ragnarok. And I saw the movie, I want to say Sunday evening. Uh, and as a comic book fan and a fan of uh, some of Thor's comics, <laughs> I'll say that, um, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. And I'm not saying that because... Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Marvel stuff, but as just a movie goer in general, uh, Thor Ragnarok was a thoroughly entertaining movie, you know, superhero stuff aside, uh, comic book stuff aside. I mean, it was just a funny, good time, you know, and I guess that's what they were going for uh, when they were making the movie. So I don't really have any qualms about the movie per se. I'm not going to say it was perfect. It was damn good. It was uh, thoroughly entertaining, uh, but there were a couple nitpicks that I'm going to get to later on in the commentary. But uh, yeah, movie was good. YouTube, the style, the, the music, the scope, uh, the whole sci fi twist, <laughs> you know, to, uh, to Thor's uh, movie mythos it was damn good. You had all the different uh, characters that were in it. Uh, some were in it longer than others, you know, looking at you, Warriors three. Uh, but it was a damn good movie. Uh, I can't really complain uh, about the movie per se. Um, the villain was strong, you know. <laughs> uh, Hella was the shit. <laughs> uh, she had a lot of personality to her, kind of like how uh, how Loki is. Um, they don't have the same personality. I'm just saying that when it comes to Marvel villains, they're all like one note type villains. Hella at least showed a couple different sides to her personality, just like Loki did. You know, he has a couple different sides to him. Um, you kind of sort of get Hella's backstory and you can kind of see where she's coming from. So it's. So it kind of leads into like, you know, what she does and and how the heroes have to go take her out. And it's uh, pretty much the movie happens in about two different stages. You have. Uh. Thor and Loki finding Odin. That's like the first quarter of the movie. Then you have Sakaar, which is like about half of the movie. And then you have the latter half of Asgard in between there. And also at the end of the movie during the big climactic sequence here. I'm trying not to give away too many spoilers, but uh, when I get to the, my nitpicking phase of the commentary, um, I'm definitely going to talk about spoilers. So if you guys are one of those people who, you know, don't want to be spoiled then i mean it is what it is i mean that's why this you know the title of this video doesn't have no spoilers in it <laughs> you know but um to get to my first nitpick here storyline i thought the movie was fine uh they seem to be mashing up two different or mostly ragnarok they're it's like 80 percent ragnarok 20 percent planet hulk um outside of them being on a planet called sakar and hulk and hulk fighting in a gladiatorial arena uh, that's all the planet Hulk is, is in this, you know, movie. Um, if you're coming to see this movie for planet Hulk stuff, you're going to be thoroughly disappointed. <laughs> uh, the rest is kind of pretty much just, a a bookend version of Ragnarok, which isn't bad. Like I said, um, uh, but it, it did feel kind of fast, you know, uh, I don't see how they would do it. I'm not a movie director, but Ragnarok has a lot of stuff you have to explain, you know, and even in this movie version, they cut out like a half of the story behind Ragnarok. If you if you read the comics and Ragnarok and, and Thor, you, you know, you know that there was a lot more to it than what they had in this, you know, but they kind of have to shorten it. They only got like two and a half hours. Hell, the movie's already long enough. So um, in order to, you know, to tell the story that they want to tell, they kind of have to fast track it. I get that. Don't get me wrong. But I really do wish that they could have somehow put more details in or gave certain sequences and scenes uh, better. I'm not going to say narrative, but let give give certain scenes room to breathe, so to speak. Um, I get it's a comedy movie. I mean, I loved it, but certain scenes kind of lack the emotional punch that they should have had 
like uh like when Odin died. Odin died like when Thor and Loki first uh found him. And it was just like right after he died for some unknown reason that they never explain. <laughs> I guess you could call that a plot hole. <laughs> um Hella comes in, they fight her, they get stranded on Sakar, and then it's back to the jokes. It's like Odin going out should have been like that sad, like, oh shit, Odin died. You know, that should have been like Asgard falling. You know, that's that's like a big pivotal thing uh to Thor. But by them dealing with the whole Ragnarok thing, the falling of Asgard and all that, I get that that's bigger. But like Odin, it was just like, oh, my wife's calling me. He pulled a red fox, <laughs> pretty much. They met him and he was like, oh, hey, I've been here the whole time. Uh, hey, Loki, remember that spell you put on me? Yeah, I figured that out within like the first few minutes of you putting me here. But, you know, I hear my wife calling me. Oh, you know, I'm coming, Fricka. And then he just kind of just faded into the nothingness. He died, <laughs> you know. Um, I wish they had explained why he died. Because that, that, that was kind of weird. I was like, okay, well, why did he die? He has the fucking Odin force. Like, he should damn near live forever, you know? But they didn't explain that all too well. Um, another thing that I, that I think I wish they would have explained going forward uh, was, uh, well, not going forward, but uh, uh, but explained a little bit more, was Thor wielding thunder and lightning without his hammer. Uh, that was something that they kind of, I'm not going to say they didn't gloss over it. That was like the focus of the movie. It's not something that kind of just popped up at the end. You saw it like, you know, like right when he first did it. And then at the and then again at the end of the movie. And it's one of those things where it's like, OK, you know, Thor always needed his his hammer to use lightning. You know, even in a comic book, that's that's why he has the hammer uh, sometimes. But if that was part of his abilities, I wish the data seeded that a little bit more. Let's say like in Thor 2 or when he or back in Thor 1 when Odin was enchanting the hammer or at least have a line of dialogue saying that, oh yeah, you know, Thor's power when he was young was too great. It, it threatened to kill him. So so uh, what I did was uh, I made this hammer for him that could channel his abilities so he was able to use them effectively. You know, that, that that's all you need is a throwaway line, you know, and then just have him use, you know, use the lightning in, in Ragnarok, you know, it, it would have been fine. But for them to lead into all the other movies of him having the hammer and using lightning and then have him you know losing the hammer and still using the lightning it's like oh hold up <laughs> you know it's they they could have explained that a little bit better and i'll get to my fix to that because i have a fix for that that, that would have probably been damn good but thor loses the hammer and everything odin dies and uh, that kind of leads into them just you know um, I'm going to say putting uh, putting the band back together, but <laughs> this was a different band <laughs> and uh, they have to take down Hella. And it was good. Like I said, uh, the fight scenes were done pretty good. It would it would uh, great. Actually, the fight between uh, Thor and Hulk was damn good and funny. <laughs> they brought back the line of uh, the Black Widow was saying a Hulk in Age of Ultron where he was like, oh, the sun's getting real low, big guy. And, you know, he tried to soothe her to calm, you know, the Hulk down and Hulk just whooped that ass. He grabbed him and started slamming him around like he did Loki uh, at the end of the Avengers one movie. And, <laughs> and Loki got up, was like, that's right. That's how that feels. <laughs> <laughs> look like like everybody else seen that happen you know <laughs> you know because they were all fighting other people at the time but um and then uh you had the hulk talking that was pretty cool uh they're gonna do an ongoing uh storyline with the hulk and banner i'm guessing they're doing it in team up movies going forward only because marvel can't really make another hulk movie because i think the rights are kind of muddled between I want to say Marvel and Paramount, so that's why you can't really make another Hulk movie. When they made the um, the Edward Norton uh, Hulk movie, uh, they kind of co-made that with Paramount, so that's why they were able to get that one out. And uh, but Marvel can't solo make a Hulk movie without Paramount either pitching in or getting their permission to do it. Marvel doesn't have the full rights to do another Hulk standalone movie. So that's why, you know, he he's he's the only Avenger to not get his solo movie outside of a uh, Hawkeye and Black Widow. But I think going forward, they're going to try to do uh in this movie they they pretty much made it so that I guess for some reason Hulk 
was Hulk for two years. Normally, when uh, Bruce Banner becomes the Hulk, he hulks out, you know, Hulk smash, you know, whatever he smashes. And then uh, after, let's say, a day or two, a few hours, he calms back down, transforms back in the banner, right? But that didn't happen this time. At the end of Avengers 2, uh, for whatever reason, he stayed being the Incredible Hulk for like two years. And he's been on this this planet a car for two years, you know? And they don't know why. And and even during the movie, when he well, when the Hulk transforms back into Banner, Banner's like something feels different. And you know, he he he's afraid of becoming the Hulk again. Because if he, you know, if he transforms, there's no way of him. You know, he doesn't know if he's going to come back, you know, so they're 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 probably going to dive into a lot of the personalities that the Hulk has. Or maybe they just might do it like how they did in the comic books at first, where you had Savage Hulk and you have Bruce Banner and they're going to probably recognize each other in, you know, in their minds and stuff like that. And uh, or maybe Marvel may even by the end of their Hulk storyline thing, maybe they even may go the Professor Hulk where it was pretty much Bruce Banner's mind controlling the Hulk's body. They may even go that route and just say like, oh, their minds merged into one and then he's Hulk all the time. You know, maybe they might go that route, kind of like how they did Hulk in the early 90s. Uh, but outside of that, that was done pretty good. They had a couple moments where they changed things up a little bit where Banner was actually show, uh, showing to have anxiety issues from being on this alien planet. <laughs> and he almost hulked out a couple times when he got mad at Thor and almost transformed. And that's something we haven't seen out of uh, uh, this version of Bruce Banner. You know, it it, it was more with uh, Edward Norton, uh, Eric Bana, and of course, David Banner from back in the day. And um, but with uh, I forget what his name is. What is this? Mark Ruffalo. That's what I with Mark Ruffalo. We haven't seen that as far as like his Hulk character. So that was that was pretty cool to see. Um, you, we also got a new character called Valkyrie. And I'm guessing she's a throwback character. She's one of the Valkyries. The Valkyries were this team of people or this elite fighting force that Odin had that he used to fight Hela with and Hela decimated them all. And it was just this one chick that was left. And she was, you know, trying to pretend she was Wolverine, trying to drink away her problems while being on this planet, waiting to die, that kind of, you know, that whole uh, ball of wax. And um, Thor talked her into helping him trying to take down Hela, yada, yada, yada. Seen that storyline a mile away. But she seems like she's a throwaway character that's based on uh, the Valkyrie that's in the comics. And in the comics, Valkyrie was pretty much just like a, I mean, for lack of a better term, I mean, uh, we have a female Thor out now, but Valkyrie was the female Thor of back in the day. Uh, she never wielded Mjolnir like the new female Thor, but she was like the Thor-esque character. Viking chick carried uh i forget i think she carried a big sword but you know she was strong she was asgardian she fought people so she was just like a female version of thor without the hammer and i don't think we're gonna get her character in this um i think they showed a character that looked like her like you know like when the valkyries all died uh, the woman who uh, who i think was valkyrie uh she was leading them so i think that may have been her and then she just died when hella attacked so it could be that, you know, they're never going to bring her back. You know, they're just going to be like, okay, let's bring this new chick. So I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, new chick was awesome in her role. So, I mean, I hope that she continues to make, you know, movies or sticks around, you know, for the long term. Um, I'm trying to think other big changes, but outside, most of the story changes just changed from how they, they adapted Ragnarok to fit the, you know, the Marvel's movie verse and everything. Um, and I'm not really opposed to what they did like i said uh i didn't like how in the beginning i didn't like how thor just whooped surter's ass though that's surter <laughs> you know surter fights odin on a regular basis <laughs> like odin was the only person to take him on and actually and and even odin couldn't kill him so you're telling me thor could just easily whoop that ass in an easy fight oh yeah let me spin my hammer a couple times and hit you in the face and you're done like no no, that's not Surter. <laughs> you know, <laughs> had a problem with that. Oh, uh, like I said, I had a problem with Thor wielding the lightning, but how I think they could have fixed that 
is the same way they could have probably fixed Odin dying. Like, if you wanted to have Thor wield the lightning and have this be like a new thing without having to explain it, when Odin died, he 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 kind of dispersed himself into energy, you know, right? What they should have did was they should have showed some of that energy going to Thor, circle around Thor, do something around him, right? To to show like, okay, part of the Odin force went inside of Thor. And then, you know, going forward, then he's like, oh shit, I can control lightning now and have that be like an additional power that the Odin force kind of gave to him, you know? Uh, I think that that could have been a better way of doing that. Um, something else that kind of bugged me is the, at the end of the movie, Thor didn't have no hammer, YouTube. Like, I thought like at the end of the movie, they were going to like use the Cosmic Cube, a.k.a. the Tesseract to it's like to wish back Asgard, bring everybody back. But no, <laughs> uh, they kind of pulled it just like in the comics In the comics. When Ragnarok happened, it's it's a reoccurring cycle meaning it has to happen over and over and over again. And uh, in the comics, when after Ragnarok died, Loki, um, well, not, not Ragnarok died, after Asgard got took down and Loki invaded and everything, killed everybody, um, Thor had to go around Earth and basically everybody on Asgard, uh, Volstagg, the rest of the warriors, you know, the warriors, his, uh, his friends, everybody, all the major people in Asgard, uh, they were basically born inside the souls of regular people and he had to go around earth and bring them back you know i thought they were going to do something like that but not bring everybody back but just say like oh look here's this magical thing at the end i'm gonna you know just shake my hammer and poof asgard's gonna come back but no they didn't do that and i have no idea where they're going with it <laughs> you know um i think they're gonna move all move all Ugh, I can't talk this evening, YouTube. <laughs> um, I think they're going to move all of the Asgardians to Norway. And because uh, they made a couple scenes of Norway, that's where Odin died. And that's where Thor broke his hammer. So it's they made a big thing about mentioning Norway. So I think they're going to go to Norway and they're pretty much going to do kind of like how they used to do used to do Asgard before the siege event in Marvel comic books, where after Ragnarok happened and, and Thor woke up everybody they basically built Asgard in Oklahoma or floating above Oklahoma. If you want to be technical about it. <laughs> and, um, I'm thinking that's what they're going to do in the Marvel MCU. They're probably going to live in Norway for a little bit. They're going to be rebuilding Asgard probably when Thanos attacks and, and shows up and he's just going to decimate everybody. I'm assuming that's going to be uh, the, way, uh, the way it goes. Although they may change things up. They may change it. Uh, because at the end of the movie, one of the, the end credit sequences, was uh Thanos' ship appearing before the ship that Thor and the Asgardian refugees were on. So maybe they might just get destroyed and Thor's the only one left floating in space until he smashes into the Guardian ship, just like in that trailer that they released during D20 and everything. But um I'm guessing most of the Asgardians and stuff are gonna just stay dead. I mean, cause cause Hela died, you know, Surtur killed Hela. Uh Odin's dead. The Asgard itself was destroyed by Surtur. Um, and the only people that are left are Thor, Loki, Heimdall, a bunch of Asgardian refugees. And that's just about it, YouTube. There's nobody left. The Warriors 3 got killed. I thought they were going to have a bigger plot in the movie. Well, not plot. I mean, I thought that they were going to be like Asgard's resistance movement against Hela at the end of the movie they join up with Thor they take him you know they take her down things like that but that didn't happen either Hela just came up and was just like yeah let me prison shank you three guys and that's it and walk off like y'all were some bitches and that's exactly what happened <laughs> you know um I wish the data kind of lived through that you know like oh man she like she's strong but we're gonna still pop back up at the end of the movie you know, throw in some Asgardian magic, heal him up a little bit. But f f for that end fight scene of the movie, have them fight with Thor. You know, I would have rather seen that than just instantly kill him. That's, that's kind of bullshit to me. Uh, like I said, I was like, this movie's not perfect. <laughs> you know, they could have storyboarded it better. But um, as a whole, uh, the movie was definitely good. Definitely good. Definitely funny. Um, I was kind of hoping that Thor would get his hammer back. But since he didn't, how I think they could have played that off better is uh, I would have rather rather than have Thor go around with no hammer because that's kind of weird, YouTube. Um, 
I would have rather have him seen like uh, Thor has used a couple weapons in the comic books throughout the years, right? Uh, most famous is Mjolnir. But before he used Mjolnir, he used this big ass enchanted axe that he fought Apocalypse with called, uh, what's it called? Yalbjorn, Yongbjorn, something. But, but it was a big ass axe. And if he wasn't going to be able to use his hammer, let's say the hammer got destroyed, right? It would have been cool, like if at the end of the movie he was like, look, I'm going to go to the armory for a second. You know, I have a weapon that could deal with this, you know, and have him go get his older axe. And let's say you can still have him, you know, use the axes as his melee weapon. But, you know, but he also has the power of lightning. So you're giving him another weapon, you know, either that or or let's say at the end of the movie, have him go back to the dwarves, the people who made, you know, Mjolnir and have them fashion a new hammer for himself to use and have, let's say that hammer, instead of looking like Mjolnir, have it look like the ultimate Thor's hammer. The one, the one with the big circular mallet part on it with the blade on the other end. I think that would have been pretty cool as well. And, you know, it's an Easter egg in its own right. <laughs> um, I wish the data did one of two, you know, one of two of those things instead of just having Thor without no hammer. But maybe that's leading into uh, what they're planning to do with Infinity War. Because maybe at the end of the movie, Thanos is going to come and fuck shit up heavily. So maybe at the end of Infinity War, when that plays out, maybe reality gets changed gets warped gets re re rewritten and then you know maybe thor is going to get his hammer back or he's going to get something else to use in the mainstay maybe that's where they're going with it you know or maybe there's some kind of ongoing plot where in 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 infinity war maybe he can't do something maybe he can't fight thanos like he wants without his hammer you know something like that maybe they're leading into something but who knows you too but anyway if I had to to give a rating on the movie, you know, one out of a 10, you know, my ratings aren't, you know, they don't stand for anything. <laughs> so don't quote me. But um, I'd had to give the movie a solid eight or a nine. Um, maybe close to pushing a 10. Like 10 isn't perfect in my eyes, but, uh, you know, because no movie can be perfect. Everything has flaws. But it, it, it's definitely up there, YouTube, either like an eight, nine or, or, or maybe pushing a 10. I mean, it's, it's fun. It's entertaining. If you want to go you know to the movies to be entertained go see thor ragnarok if you're somebody who wants to see a brooding superhero movie like the older batman movies then this movie obviously is not for you i don't know why you're even listening to this commentary but anyways guys ju that's just been my thoughts on the movie so my name is Dananu, the man with the biggest and the most blackest privilege on youtube and i'll see you guys later peace out